Hello everyone, welcome to Screen Scream on Viola. In today's episode, we're going to talk about movies that are based on true stories. Either they are a documentary, or adaptations, or a plot inspired by a true story. And last but not least, we will talk about some trending movies in the end. Hope you will like the show today. Let's listen to the first newly released movie we're going to talk about today. My Rembrandt. This is set in the world of the old masters and offers a mosaic of gripping stories in which unrestrained passion for Rembrandt's paintings leads to dramatic development and unexpected plot turns. Als de Rembrandts in deze categorie op de markt komen, betekent dat. The first new movie we're going to talk about today is My Rembrandt. It's actually a documentary, but the plot in it is so dramatic that. You will think, wait, was this scripted? The main character, you can also call it the protagonist in this documentary, is Yan Six. He really likes Rembrandt's paintings, even when he was little, and he followed his passion to the path of becoming an art broker. So the story of this documentary is that Yan Six found a painting and bought it because he believed. This is the true painting of Rembrandt without his signature. Of course, in the beginning, people didn't believe him and doubted him. But eventually, they really think that oh, we think this really is authentic. This incident then brought Gen Six to fame right away, and also changed how his friends, his mentors, and the authorities of Rembrandt look at him. During the pre-production period, the director wrote down a lot of notes just for the preparation of the documentary, and the director thinks that there is a lot of resonance, emotions, and sincerity in Rembrandt's paintings, and that's how he connects with his audience, especially in Rembrandt's self-portrait in his late life. His observation and his painting skills really tell people how imperfect life is. This is also a very important theme of this documentary. So the director started to do research on the importance of Rembrandt since 2016. He visited a lot of people who value Rembrandt's paintings very much, and some are even obsessive with it. During director's visits to these important people about Rembrandt, he knew Yan Six from the famous Six family. At the time, Yan Six was trying to get rid of the pressure from his father and the tradition that he has to inherit the family business, and that's how the story began. Some people are worried that documentary might be boring. But after I read the introduction of my Rembrandt, I realized that it sounds like a very interesting movie. So I think if you're interested in paintings, you might love this movie. And now let's move on to the second new movie, which is also based on the true story. Spencer, during her Christmas holidays with the royal family at the Sandringham Estate in Norfolk, England, Diana decides to leave her marriage to Prince Charles. And she's late. Yes, she is late. The second new movie we're going to talk about today is Spencer, based on the true story of Princess Diana. The actress who portrayed Diana in the movie is Kristen Stewart. If you still remember when Kristen Stewart was still playing the Twilight Saga, people criticized her for having only one facial expression. And she never knew how to close her mouth, things like that. But actually, she started acting when she was little. So I think it might just because at the time she was a teenager herself, and the character Bella was exactly how she portrayed. She's a little bit confused, not so confident, or Kristen Stewart was just trying to try out different ways of acting, and the one in Twilight. Was a failure. However, in Spencer, her acting skill is highly appraised. It's not only critically acclaimed, 
but also aiming for different best actresses in different film festivals. So, for example, if you are paying attention to any movie critics, you will know that it's very difficult to get positive comments from The Guardian in the UK. However, The Guardian actually thinks that Kristen Stewart captures the confusion Diana has because she's isolated and the systematic life. Diana basically couldn't see who she was at the time, and there's nowhere for her to hide. On the other hand, the Hollywood Reporter thinks that Kristen Stewart was impeccable on her accent and her behavior. All the details related to Princess Diana. In some interviews, Kristen Stewart said that she was so into the character that sometimes she would even cry for the fact that Princess Diana is already dead. I personally saw the series The Crown, so I'm interested in the history of the royal family. And if you're also a fan of the royal family or just Princess Diana. Spencer is probably the movie for you to go, and you know between November and February is the season of Oscar, so it's really worth it to watch any movie that's gonna be seen at the Oscars. Before we move on to top double oh seven, let's review what we had from last week. Top three, Dune. Top two was Halloween Kills, and there were two movies. As top one, No Time to Die and Venom: Let There Be Carnage. There is some change on our chart this week, so let's check it out. Top seven to top four. Top six, My Hero Academia: World Heroes Mission. Top five, Halloween Kills. Top four, The Falls. There are only three movies on top seven to top four this week, and there's only one new movie. So apparently, we're going to talk about that. The Falls is a Taiwanese movie that was released last week, and from friends who already saw it, the opinions are pretty diverse. Some friends think that the protagonist Elisa Jia Jia Jingwen is really good at playing characters with、um, weak mental health. It's similar to her character in The World Between Us, the series. But according to Elisa herself, she said this is a character that、um, you wouldn't be able to encounter every day. Just like my friend said, she's very suitable for portraying characters who are not in a good mental health. But if you take a closer look at her character in The Falls, you will recognize that there's actually big changes on her physical acting and eye contact. Elisa said that when the director approached her in the beginning, he started to share some stories of his friends first. And then he told her the content and thoughts about this movie. She kind of agreed to join the project right away, but she also admitted that a lot of close-up shots made her anxious and stressful. But she's still pretty happy shooting eventually. She thinks that people need to take care of themselves regularly. A lot of people think that The Falls is a feminine film because both protagonists are female. They're both nominated as the best actress at the Golden Horse Award. But Elisa herself doesn't think The Falls is a feminine film because she thinks that、uh, no matter what gender you are, people, human beings, need to take care of ourselves in our daily lives. Um, whatever emotion you have, you need to express it from time to time. Otherwise, it will explode like a fall or flood when it's too much. And how you express it is also very important. So it's also another important theme in the falls. 
It's just because the main characters in the folds are female, and maybe most female audience will have some thoughts after watching the film, or they can sympathize the characters. So it's easier for a female audience to resonate. But actually, The Falls is a movie that's suitable for everyone. Now let's move on to top three to top one. Top three, Ron Scan Ron. Hi, Barney. I'm your best friend out of my box. Top two, No Time to Die. Where's 007? I need a favor. Top one, Dune. Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always. You know that. I've been having dreams. Venom, let there be carnage. Good evening, Eddie. Hey, Mrs. Chen. Good evening, Venom. Boxer House, Mrs. Chen. We have a new movie this week on top three to top one. That is,、um, Ron's Gone Wrong. It's an animation, and wow, No Time to Die and Dune switched positions. I'm very surprised that Venom is still on top one, but whatever. Dune got up because it was just released in the U.S. last week, and therefore I'd like to talk about it today. Actually, I didn't want to watch Dune at all in the first place because I'm not interested in history, and I do love science fiction, but I don't like the feeling Dune gives me. But after it was released, like. One or two days, friends who went to see it all told me that oh you should watch it. You probably will like it because they know I how much I love stories like The Lord of the Rings and Dune is definitely one of the the epic movies. But you know a lot of people say that it's a movie version of Game of Thrones, and I'm not into that. I didn't watch it at all. First of all, it's history. Secondly, I don't like、uh, stories about families、um, winning power over each other. It's just so boring for me. And after watching Dune, yes, that's exactly what I felt. But I do think the movie is great because the score was awesome, and the view in the movie is impeccable. So I started writing about it. While I was writing, I was doing research, and I realized, wow, this is actually an interesting story. And Dune Part One is just a two and a half minute trailer for the whole universe. So I ordered the box set. Of the English and Mandarin version of the novel right away, so it's crazy, I know. But that's just how I wanted to understand the story after I watched it, and I think that's the magic of Dune. Yes, it must seem a little bit boring for the first episode in the beginning, and there are a lot of names that are impossible to be remembered at the first place. But if you know that. Dune actually inspired a lot of different science fiction. Later, you will want to know how the world, the universe, was established. And it was just announced a few days ago that part two of Dune is to go. So if you're a fan of Dune or you're not yet, but you do love science fiction, I recommend you to watch Dune. And maybe we can talk about it more later in the future episodes. That's all the time we have for today. If you like the show, please like it and share it for us. Remember to tune in same time next week. I'm Viola. See you next week.